So here we continue with our introduction to YAC for generating a simple parser for a calculator of, for infix expressions. So we've been editing calc.y, which is our YAC input source file. The .y extension is the convention for YAC input files that contained our context-free grammar and our actions to perform when a reduction is performed for each, produ each production in our grammar, <clears throat> amongst other things. So we're going to run that through the tool YAC, which will output the C source, y.tab.c, which contains the function yyparse, which is our parser, among other things. Now, we actually want to communicate what are some of the tokens we've used in our attribute type to Lex, so we also want to generate a header file that has that information. So I'm going to use the dash D option. The dash D option will actually produce a dot H file as well, and that will actually include this in our Lex input source when we do that. So, and then the next step, once, once we've got that done, then we'll feed our Lex input file, which contains our regular expressions and actions. And the, notice the convention here is use a uh, file with a .l extension. We'll run that through Lex, and that'll produce the C source code for our lexical analyzer called YYLex. And when that all seems to be working correctly, then we'll take our source code for our parser and for our lexer and run it through the compiler to produce our final calculator. All right, so here's our, our input file for yak you can again you can see between the percent percent signs we have our grammar so let's go ahead and just just for now just go ahead and run yak on this and, and you'll notice something here that we get some conflicts there's some errors with our grammar and it has to and so the shift reduce and reduce reduce conflicts which we'll talk about in great detail later in the course but it really comes to the fact is I made a mistake in my grammar. Um, here where I, was, I should have used a, a, um, a T instead of an F. There are my mistakes. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. And you can see now, um, now I'm down to two shift reduce conflicts. You might ask yourself, well, hmm, how can I find what th those conflicts are? Well, oh, well, that has to do with the fact this should have been an F. That's what I get for cut and paste. All right, so let's try it again here. Aha, okay, now we're cool. So, <clears throat> so now, now what I want to do here is rerun it again, but I'm going to go run calc with the dash D option. And you can see if I do an LS, I actually have a header file called y.tab.c. And if I actually look at that header file, you'll see it's got a bunch of stuff in here. Yeah, it's got our um, type for yylval, which is a yys type, which is this simple union. We can see here is there's our type. There's our union for yys type, and then we're going to have this global value called yylval, which is going to hold the attribute information associated with a num. So anyway, we'll see how this works. So I'm going to go into my lex file. And I'm going to make sure that this gets included into my, my lexer. So up here in the above the preamble, I'm going to have a little bit of code up here. I'm going to go ahead and pound include standard io.h and standard lib.h. And I'm also going to include the file y.tab. All right, so that this was generated via yak minus d. So there's there's the header file, and that's going to have the information, so that so that we actually know about this dot f file here, the dot f field, which is so, and it also allows Lex to know what this num token is, because that's all defined in that that particular header file. All right, so let's let's can so let's go ahead now we and run lex. So I'm going to run I'm going to run calc dot lex on calc dot l. You can see that now I'm going to go ahead and run it through my two files through the compiler. So I'm going to have lex .yy .c. I'll run my my parser which is called y.tab.c and we'll have the output be calc. 
and we notice we get some errors here. It doesn't know about YY error, so let's go fix that. That's because at this point we need we need to make a, we need to declare up into up at the top that the function YY error exists. All right, so let's put that in there and let's now. So now we'll go ahead and rerun. So I'll go ahead and clear the screen here. I'm going to go ahead and rerun uh, Yak. And then I'm going to go ahead and rerun Lex. And then I'll go ahead and rerun my compiler. You can see, OK, so now we got another problem. It's expecting this YY wrap. Well, there's a, there's a couple different ways we could solve this particular problem. The, probably the easiest way that I'm to solve this problem for now is just to go into the lexical analyzer and say, ah, uh, we, we don't declare the option YY, no, no YY wrap. There's a, we actually, um, there's a library that we can include to, to get around that. Or we could actually define our own function called, well, called YY wrap. All right, so now let's go ahead and try that again. So I'm going to go ahead, make sure that was saved. Yeah, okay, I'm going to save. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to first run Yak. And then I'm going to run Lex. And then I'm going to run my C compiler again. And now you can see I've got a program called Calc. So if I run Calc, I can run 3 plus 4. Let's try it out 3 plus 4 times 5. And Control D. You can see that it indeed put, put out the answer. Let's try a more complicated. Let's try 1, 2.5. Um, plus um, negative 34 divided by 456, and I don't know, let's see if that outputs control D. So you can verify if that's the case. I don't, yeah, that probably looks right. So anyway, so now you can see that we have our calculator running, right? So so there's our lexical analyzer source code. And there's our simple calculus. So as you can see that all these actions are getting fired every time we do a reduction. And so there's our simple calculator. Now let me, I'm going to show you another way we could have fixed that YY wrap problem if that's bugging you. If we didn't have that, another way we could do this is, okay, I can comment this out. Another way we could do this. So YY wrap is if you're getting your input from multiple files so it'll wrap them together another way to do this is it's trying to look for this function called yy wrap and you could actually define it and just return minus one so this is another way that i could have solved the problem so let me run that again so i'll go ahead and and um, again rerun yak rerun lex rerun the compiler and you'll see that that still works one plus two times three Seven, okay, good. Um, yet another way, I'll comment this out, yet another way to solve this is we could instead when we compile, so I've got to rerun, rerun Yak again, rerun Lex again, and now when I compile this time, I could actually include the flex library. So it, on Linux, I would do LFL to include the flex library. On, a, on an OS 10, it's just LL. It's lib. It's lib. <coughs> lib L dot A. So if I do that, that also that's another way to solve that particular problem. So my calculator hopefully still works. Plus 34, 95, and Control D. So I generate Control D, and there we go. So there's a simple introduction to Lex and Yak, which we're going to talk about in, in great detail. We could create a simple make file for this if we wanted to. Um, I won't do that now, but we'll talk about a lot of these things in, in gory detail later.